Pile one, welcome to your guys' reading all about why do people regret losing you? So I have only one card on the table. I'm going to go ahead and show you and I'm going to be pulling other cards later on. But the card that I shuffled off camera for you is the card that says a time to give rather than take new moon in Virgo. And even with the image that you chose, Pal One, it made me think of like rain falling from the sky. And then as you can see, this woman has flowers. So it makes me think that you are the type of person that likes to nurture other people. Um, but I am going to say this though, with that Virgo placement here, it makes me think that a lot of the things that you do for people is often hidden until you disappear out of their lives. So people don't really appreciate you as much or they don't recognize everything that you bring to the table until you're gone. Because when we think about Virgo, this is the sixth house. Um, this makes me think of behind the scenes errands, work, details, and your duties. So you are a very service-minded person. I'm getting that for you, Pile One, where you like to be useful. You like to feel like you have purpose. And I'm getting that you could be the type of person that likes to be of service to other people. Um, and with that, that can come with a lot of people-pleasing tendencies sometimes. Not all the time, but most of the time. And I'm seeing that you are the type of person that likes to help people out. You're a very generous person. Um, you also know when to find the flaws and be able to perfect things. So you're the type of person that likes to be busy. You like to fix things for people. Like you are the fixer upper person. You're the person that likes to be of service. You like to help people. Um, I'm also hearing that you're the type of person where you're very giving. So if you see someone is struggling with something, Thing, or if they're lacking something, you would give like the shirt off your back to that person. But I am channeling for you that a lot of these people that regret losing you, they don't really know a good thing until it's gone. Um, there's something about how you make something into a habit. I'm hearing this. People almost get used to your kindness, which this is really sad for you, Pav One, because you are such a, I'm hearing you're such a gift to people. You are so, wow, easily mishandled. There's something so genuine about your generosity where you just want to be able to help people because of the goodness of your heart. But it's like you give away your energy so freely that people may take advantage of this or people may, you know, get used to this because I'm seeing that you almost make this into a habit where if you see that someone, for example, you make someone breakfast, right? And this person's like, wow, this breakfast is amazing. Thank you, pal one. And you're like, wow, this person really likes the breakfast that I made. I'm going to make this bre breakfast for them every single day. And so it's like this little sweet treat that you make into an everyday occurrence. And so when people, you know, get into habits or rituals or routines, we tend to, you know, not really see the beauty or the specialness of whatever that service is or whatever that routine is because we get used to it, right? Um, we don't really recognize what we're lacking until it's gone. And that's the mentality that I'm getting. You are such a gift to people. You're such a blessing. But people often get used to it because you're so readily available for people. And I want you to know that this is not your problem. This is a this is the other people's problem. I'm not I'm not trying to make you feel bad for how wonderful you are because this is something that's very rare. 
but I think you're just around the wrong people that don't appreciate this uh, from you, right? Um, I am hearing that this is going to be a time in your life where you need to work on boundaries and maybe that's what you're doing right now. Maybe that's why you're clicking on this video because maybe you have been putting boundaries up with people. Maybe you have been, you know, removing yourself from situations where you didn't feel like you were being appreciated or um, getting the same love that you want to be having returned back to you and so maybe you're just trying to get like a an energy checkup to see what's going on with these people but i want to say right now the people that you are no longer in contact with or maybe even like this could even be like your old jobs right your old bosses co-workers the things that you have done for people the work behind the scenes the extra workload that you have taken even though you didn't need to it is definitely being missed at this time because people recognize after the fact that you are a special gem after you leave their lives or after you put up these boundaries because they'll start to look at other people and look at other people's routines and other people's way of doing things as well as their mentalities with them and they recognize how different and special you are compared to these other people. Not that these other people don't have great qualities of their own, but there's something about you where you're so generous, you're so, you, you wanna be so useful to people. You wanna feel like you have this sense of kindness and fairness and you see when people are lacking something or you see something that's missing and you want to give something of yourself or you just want to be there to help someone out and not everyone is like that pile one and you need to know this where you know even if people don't recognize till after the fact your spirit team just wants you to know how great you are because i don't think you're told that enough i'm channeling that for you I don't think you're told enough how awesome you are because you just kind of give everything away so freely. You give away your energy so freely, your love, your happiness, your items, money, whatever, right? Services, if you're in a field where maybe you help other people, you just give it away so freely because it's just, it's you. It's just, it's your personality. And you don't really expect anything in return, which is so amazing as well. You don't expect, um, you know, people to give you gratitude. You don't expect people to give you freebies or an IOU or anything like that. You're just doing it because you want to do it. But your spirit team wants to be able to say thank you for these people if they never or they haven't been able to say thank you to you. So that is something that I was channeling. But you need to know, Pile One, people feel your absence. They might not recognize it like the first day or the second day, but it's making me think of like a buildup of days where they're like, damn, like Pile One did so much for me. Like, wow, like I didn't recognize everything that they did for me behind the scenes or the workload that they were actually taking on until it starts to build up. It's making me think of like a buildup of you being missing and it starts to show in their everyday surroundings everything that you did or everything that you put into. Like, for example, let's just say that you, I don't know why I'm getting this example, you cleaned the kitchen like every day or once a week or whatever, right? Um, and then you leave and then, you know, people are, you know, hustling and bustling through their days and they're making food or whatever. And it, it accumulates over time, the grime and the grossness <laughs> and the food debris and all that. And so like a couple weeks later, they're like, fuck, like this kitchen looks horrible. Why is it so messy? And they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Pile one was always cleaning up after me or they were like cleaning once a week and now that they're not here it's really starting to become a hassle to be in this kitchen it's like really dirty now and so it's like the little things like that where it's really making me think that you make improvements and you're not like trying to be purposefully showing that you're doing these things for these people but it is definitely missed when you leave or it's definitely noticeable over time that you made a huge impact on these people's lives in some sort of way. Um, 
And I'm really getting it's because of the things that you offered or the things that you did for people or the services that you provided or just your kindness. There's something about you, your energy. You're like a light and it's very healing. I'm really channeling that for you. So that's what I got for your one card, pile one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start shuffling other cards to see why do people regret losing you, right? Um, why do people regret losing you? So we got lunar eclipse, dramatic change, shift in perception, unveiling, disillusion, cycles, endings and beginnings, transformation. This is a pretty dramatic card. I'm telling you, your... Your energy, your absence is definitely noticed after you're gone. Do you see how this guy's like looking around like where'd, where'd pile one go? And it's, it's funny because we have these black moons. It's like people don't recognize everything that you do until you're gone. And it's very dramatic. I'm seeing that. It's like people, this is horrible for you, pile one, because I feel so bad that you have gone through this or that you're going through this right now. People, I just, I see this. People take you for granted or people don't recognize your value or your worth until after you leave the premises. It's like after you claim your power back or take away your energy or you stop providing whatever these people are receiving from you or taking from you, that's when people snap out of this little bubble and they're like, wow. Pile one did so much for me. Pile one was a great friend or pile one was such a hard worker. I goofed up. Like it's almost like people are in this state of confusion. I'm seeing this. It's like they've been sleeping on you, pile one. That's what it feels like. Like people have been not seeing you for who you actually are. Or it's like something's clouded in their judgment. And then it's like once you leave, they wake up out of it and they're like, fuck, I messed up. Or I really like, I goofed. It, I'm really channeling that. People are seriously like, I mishandled pile one. Or I didn't see the, the beauty or the gift of a person that I had until they were gone. You are that person, pile one, where I'm really getting this for you. The one that got away. That's what it makes me think of. You are the person that has gotten away from most of these people. And on the bottom of the deck, look at what it says. Your soul has returned to learn many lessons. So these people, the reason why you have been entering a lot of these people's lives where you have felt like you weren't being noticed or you weren't being recognized or people weren't appreciating you is to help change these people's perceptions about you but not even just you just people in general you are meant to break the mold of something in their lives i'm really seeing that because even with this card it says disillusion you are meant to be some sort of cycle breaker for people and i want to see what area of this you know this person's life or just people's lives in general that you're meant to break right there's something about dropping a perception or a view or way of doing things 10th house as well as the north node so again with that north node this is all about purpose this is about destiny but this is about the uncomfortable what you're learning this is about going down a new path something that you've never done before and that 10th house is all about public persona as well as your career and what you're known for so you are changing the lives of people of what is expected to be successful, what is expected to be who you're supposed to be in society. Um, there's something about a role. I'm getting that. A role that people need to play. You're changing the molds of what they expect people to be or what is expected of them or how they even just live their own life. This is a really big deal. You are going to be making them question every single relationship that they've ever had in their lives. You are going to be that person that makes them question what they're supposed to be doing with their life in general, as well as their own public mask and their own role that they play in their own lives. I'm seeing you be like a tower moment in people's lives. I'm getting that. You are like the death card and the tower card combined. You bring endings to people when it comes to how they show up in life, right? But also, it's making me think of like a matrix mentality. 
you are going to be that person that makes them feel challenged when it comes to their limiting beliefs, when it comes to their own subconscious, as well as when it comes to their own karma, the karma that they need to work through in their life. And a lot of this has to do with their almost like their public persona, how people perceive them, how they move in life because of you, your kindness, your generosity, but also there's something so real about you too that is undeniable, which is why these people, it's like it shakes them to their core. I'm hearing that. You completely dissolve people's mindsets when it comes to who they feel like they need to be in their life but also how people publicly perceive them. Because you are a walking tower moment, people recognize the security that you bring to people's lives, but it's not really noticed until after you're gone. It's like you are the type of person where you better other people. You make people find their sense of worth. You help people find their, their calling. It's almost like you help people find their identity and their calling and their purpose in life. And you may not even be doing this, you know, subconsciously, or sorry, consciously. You may not even recognize that you're doing this pal one. But there's something about something so powerful about your energy that helps people find their purpose or helps people wake up to something that they need to change in their own lives which is a really powerful thing. And it doesn't really have to be anything. It just could be the way that you communicate with these people. It could be your own beliefs. It could just be your energy, your vibe, your happiness, the kindness that you bring to others. But something about you I'm hearing is life-changing to these people, but they don't really recognize this until you're gone. Like you're meant to make an impact on people. And unfortunately for them and for you, they don't really see this until you leave. But I'm hearing that it's meant to be that way. I don't know. It's sad. I mean, it's sad for you and for them, but you're meant to be that chain breaker for people, right? Let's see why else people regret losing you. I keep hearing stuff about beauty. Okay, so we have children. I keep hearing stuff about beauty for some reason. So you could just be... I'm hearing a late bloomer, so maybe people are, like, maybe your past love life people, I don't know, um, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but people that you dated in the past, they may be recognizing that you're going through some sort of glow up right now, or maybe they didn't really appreciate how just beautiful of a person you are internally and maybe just outwardly, but there's just something very beautiful, very pretty about you. Um, that people are talking about. I'm hearing that you are getting complimented a lot right now and I'm hearing it's behind your back. So there's a lot of people that are talking about how they, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this. It's like the people that you have left or the people that are no longer in your lives, they're having to hear you be complimented behind your back. So you're being spoken about in rooms that you don't even know about. And these people are with these other people that you used to talk to. It's like a group of people. For example, these are two people that you don't know. And then this is a person that used to be in your life. And this person has to hear conversations that are very positive about you. It's like they're witnessing you. I'm hearing like witnessing you flower or transform or glow up. And they're having to be involved in these conversations. They're almost having to watch you improve in your life. But I'm also seeing something about how they're they're almost watching you learn to love yourself. That's what I'm hearing. It's like you're going through a confidence boost. Um, and these people are advocating for you. And these people from your past are having to watch this. It's like they're getting a first, yeah, a front row seat of your come up. That's what I'm hearing. But the other thing that I want to say too with your cards here. I was hearing something about prettiness. I feel like you, there's a really weird quality that you have that I'm channeling. You make people more attractive or more desirable when you're around them. So, and again, this doesn't have to just be love, but there's something about your energy or maybe the things that you do for others that make them look more rested or more youthful. Maybe you're the type of person that's really into beauty and fitness and health. And so you recommend like some advice or you maybe you even give freebies to these people. 
Um, you help better them, not just spiritually, but physically. And it really shows because these people will start looking nicer. Their energy will be a lot lighter. Um, they're not as stressed or they're eating better. And there's something about how you you kind of like level people up. And so when you leave, that's also very noticeable because when you leave, it's almost like their health will start declining. And you're not doing this purposefully, but there's something about your energy where you're very healing to people. And healing could be emotional, mental, as well as physical. So when you leave, over time, it is definitely noticed that you made a big impact on people, that you helped a lot, that you were very uh, generous with your energy, your time, and your money. That is definitely missed, right? Um, the other thing that I want to say too, you have a childlike spirit. Again, with that energy of you give to people, I'm seeing the children as your, you have a very youthful spirit. Um, and with children, they're very pure in their energy. And even with Virgo, it's the virgin, right? So you are purifying to people. People recognize when you're gone because it's like you're a dog, like you're almost like a pet. You're a companion for people. You help make people feel better, feel lighter, feel happier, more positive. Um, but I'm also seeing too, wow, this is a really random message that I'm getting. People that you dated or were with romantically in the past, now that they're getting older, they're recognizing that they want to settle down and start a family. And when they think about these things, they think about you. So take what you will with that information. Um, another thing that I'm channeling for you too, you really get to the nitty gritty of people. And what I mean by that is you, there's something so open. Again, generosity. You're very generous with your energy, your vibe, your personality. You are very authentic. You don't wear a mask. And so because of that, you make people feel very comfortable. So people are recognizing that they can't really get comfortable with other people as much as they can with you. You can help people easily open up and bear their souls, right? But you're also the type of person that just really cares about people. And so you like to be very involved in their lives and their energy. You want to be able to get to the nitty gritty. You want to make people feel comfortable with you. And so you'll be very open with them and they'll be very open with you. And they'll just kind of, you know, talk about anything. Like think about your best friend or, you know, someone that you consider a soulmate. You can just literally bear your soul to this person. And it does doesn't matter what you do you can just be sitting around and reading a book or whatever and you feel comfortable in their energy and that's what it makes me think of again when you get comfortable with people you tend to take them for granted right because with comfortability you you stop trying so hard to make like please the other person you get into habits and routines that's your energy. You make people feel so comfortable and so safe and so nurtured that a lot of the time these people take you for granted because they're too comfortable. Um, and again, this is not a you problem. This is a, a them problem. You are meant to be involved in these people's lives that it keeps happening to you because you're meant to change these people. But I want to see... So I want to see how this is supposed to be changing you, right? Because we're talking so much about how you're impacting others, but how is this going to be impacting you in the long run, pile one? The star. I'm telling you, you are meant to be noticed. You're meant to be reciprocated for this. All of this is going to be good karma for you. When you think about the star, again, it's a light in the darkness. Think about the contrast of the sun versus the star. The sun is extremely noticeable, obviously, right? It's literally the light that we need for our day. But when it comes to the night, everything is so hidden. But you are like the, the light in the darkness. It's like you are so needed, but people don't really recognize how needed you are until it's too late. But what I'm seeing for you is you are going to be finally recognized for everything that you do for other people. I'm hearing as you get older, wow, I'm hearing a lot of this has to do with betrayals. A lot of this has to do with instant gratification. People have been very selfish with your energy, very selfish with maybe even your body, with your love. And I'm seeing this, you just watering. Again, there's a lot of references to plants. 
And even with that image, it looked like there's butterflies falling onto the person. You have given so much to so many people and your spirit guides need you to know that you have like a, I'm hearing like a capsule, like this big bank of good karma that is about to enter your life soon. I want to see what that is because I'm hearing that you are about to be receiving everything that you have given to people very soon. Let's see. Wow. Okay. And it could be in the form of an opportunity. It could be in the form of assistance. It could be in new, you know, possibilities, promises, um, avenues. This could be a new work opportunity, but I'm seeing opportunities coming to you in your life because of everything that you were able to grant for other people. You gave these people the tools to better your, their lives and now God is wanting to be able to do the same for you. So let's see what month this is all going to start unfolding for you. This could be around December. So I don't know when you guys are watching this again with the star. This is a Aquarius season. So I'm seeing the winter time being significant for most of you. So whenever the next winter season is going to be happening for you, that is when the doors will be opening for you. I'm hearing the floodgates of your blessings from everything that you've done for other people. All right. And one last message for you about why people regret losing you. People regret how great of a friend that you were, regardless if this is someone that you worked with, regardless if this is someone that you were romantically interested in, you gave people genuine companionship, genuine friendship, and you were always a listening ear for people, but you gave some great advice too. Um, you are just, you're so loyal to people, Pile One, and you're going to be recognized for that. And I'm hearing that if you're lonely or you have felt lonely the majority of your life, um, I am hearing that your spirit team wants to send at least, at least one person that you can consider your soul family, someone that will love and reciprocate your love and give it back to you and appreciate you for everything that you are. Um, and they want to bring that to you as one of your blessings, all right? It may be later in life, but this person is not going to be going anywhere. This person is going to be seeing everything that has happened to you and love you more for it. And so you need to know that because whoever this person is, I am hearing that this person will be sent by God. They're here to be the other half, like missing, like missing pieces that you have or things that you're lacking. They're meant to help lift you up or fill your cup up right? Because you are so busy filling up other people's cups that your spirit team is recognizing that you may be on empty right now and they want to bring a person into your life that will help boost you, help recognize you, help you feel uplifted. And so that's one of the blessings that I'm seeing coming into your life, possibly by this time frame, right? But pile one, that is all that I have to say for you. I really hope that this video was helpful. I have more videos like this on my channel if you guys are interested and I will see all of you in the next one. Pile 2, welcome to your guys' pick a card reading about why do people regret losing you. So the card that I pulled for you, I'm going to be pulling other cards on camera, but we got a card that says it's time to take action, new moon in Aries. So you could be an Aries, sun, moon, or rising, um, but you don't have to be. But when you think about Aries energy pile two, this is all about you feeling this sense of enthusiasm, you being super outgoing, um, energetic energy, almost like a pioneering spirit. And when you see a pioneering spirit, this is all about taking charge and taking action. So I feel like the people that you are no longer, I don't know if these are people that you cut out of your life or maybe you just put some boundaries up, I don't know. But I'm hearing something about stagnant energy. There's something about, I'm hearing that you're like a firecracker in people's lives where you keep things fun and exciting. And it's because you motivate people to initiate changes in their lives by almost like the sense of bravery or them being more outgoing or them being able to take more risks. And because you're not in their life, their life is stagnant or they feel like there's nothing happening or their life isn't moving the way that they want it to go. Um, you're almost like, okay, I'm hearing something about how you are this type of mentality where 
there's something about roadblocks or blockages in people's lives. It's like you know how to help people navigate through their problems or through their issues by getting people to take charge in their own lives. And you might not even be, you know, doing this physically for people, but something about your energy motivates people to direct their power and their will to focus on their goals. And since you have not been in their life or I don't know what's going on since you're no longer accessible to these people that regret losing you. They feel like their life is not going in the direction that they want it to go or they feel like they're lacking something or they don't feel brave enough to make the changes that they want for their life to flourish the way that they want it to be. Um, I'm seeing something about how you are a go-getter. Again, your your vibe really rubs off on people. So the people that you keep close to you, they benefit off of this boldness that you have because again, it helps initiate something within them to take charge in their own lives. Or maybe you're just a really helpful person and you'll see things that they're lacking or maybe there's things that you know they're too afraid to say or speak up. And so you'll help them by stepping and for them but since you've been gone these people have been having a lot of like delays i'm really hearing this it's like stagnant energy in their career is what i'm definitely hearing like it's like the biggest thing that i'm sensing has something to do with like your responsibilities or their responsibilities sorry pal too something when it comes to their their duties the responsibilities or the workload um they have been having a lot of like stagnant when it comes to maybe job opportunities, maybe they've been feeling like everything's been really repetitive or the same. Um, and this doesn't just have to be about work, but I really am feeling for someone here. There's something about either workload or their job or career. Their, their life has been feeling very stagnant in that department or things have been, just been feeling very hard and they're not really able to catch up with the workload or they feel like they're overworking but they're not really getting the success that they want. Um, something about you, you would see problems and turn them into possibilities. There's something about you where you're also very um, positive. There's something about your positivity and sorry, my dog is wheezing outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Um, but I'm just, I'm seeing you as almost like head butting obstacles. Even with these horns here, you, you tackle your problems, you face your issues head on. And there's something about you where you help people challenge their own fears, their own problems. Um, I'm hearing that you have attracted in your life very weak-minded people, and I'm not saying this to, you know, be rude about these people that are missing you, but it's almost like these people viewed you as almost like, wow, these people saw you as like a guard dog. That's a very strange message, because again, my dog's wheezing outside because he has allergies, but it's like, you would be that friend or you would be that co co-worker where if you were to see someone being bullied or if you were to see someone, you know, having issues, you would speak up about it or you would take action or you would just do it. You would just, you know, do what you feel like would be the best course of action without overthinking or over explaining. Um, and people really miss that energy because not everyone is fearless like you. Not everyone is able to just take action and be impulsive like you. Um, and I'm, again, impulsivity is not a bad thing, but you do things on a whim without overanalyzing it because you can just see that there's something needs to be done. And so you just do it right. Um, and you do it to help better other people. And these people are missing you because they need someone that's very directive like you. Again, it's making me think of like a herd dog where a herd dog will start herding the sheep or the lamb and the goats or whatever. And they'll just take charge. They'll take initiative without overthinking or doubting themselves or whatever. We need people like you to get things done. Um, I am channeling a message in regards to love. There is someone that you used to date that misses you. All right. So the first card that I pulled, again, with that extend your lighthearted energy to others, you may be seen as someone that is a huge flirt, all right? You bring fun, and I'm hearing this, you bring fun into the bedroom. I don't know if that's going to resonate for everyone here, uh, but you have someone that misses you, that misses the fun times that you guys had together. Um, this person that you were romantically interested in, 
they're talking about how, wow, 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 wow. Pile two, I'm really getting some uh, <laughs> almost 18 plus stuff here, but uh, I'm gonna try and keep it PG. But they're talking about how you were probably, you know, the most fun that they've ever had when it comes to a romantic partner. Um, you're someone that keeps things exciting. It's like this honeymoon romance that I'm channeling here. It's like you are, you could just be seen as someone that's very romantic, but you bring a lot of passion. There's a lot of passion, a lot of heat, and a lot of fire that you bring into your uh, romantic partnerships. And there's someone in particular talking about how they miss the spark that they've had with you. Um, it was a very flirty and fun relationship. You guys made a lot of memories together is what I'm hearing. There's a lot of special moments that this person is picking up on that they miss you for. I'm hearing a lot of first. So again, you guys, you could have like maybe taken them to places that they've never been or showed them a lot of new, uh, I'm hearing like movies and cultures and music like you bring fun and excitement because you are someone that likes to do a lot of things or try new things and whoever this person is is you know reminiscing on the times and the things that you guys did together and it doesn't have to just be sexual things but I'm seeing this as experiences as fun moments you know like thinking back on wow I'm never gonna do that again because it was only with this type of person which is pile two like you are just a really cool person and they're thinking back on that. And I want to see who this person is so that you can kind of get like a heads up. Who is this person that's reminiscing on pile two? So they could be a Leo, sun, moon, or rising. They could be funny and Aries, sun, moon, or rising, or a Scorpio. So Leo, Aries, or Scorpio, sun, moon, or rising. That is, you know, reminiscing on the fun times that you guys had together. Um, most definitely when it comes to romance. I'm really getting that. Um, the other thing that I'm channeling for you, why people regret losing you or why they're missing your energy. You, I'm hearing something about your, your gabbing, your talking, <laughs> maybe your conversations. Um, this is a really strange message, but I even just pulled this card. I know I was a distraction from your pain. You are the type of person where, again, it's like lighthearted, fun energy. You, you help people almost feel better. And I, it could just be because maybe you keep things fun and lighthearted. You keep things fresh. Um, you help distract people from their everyday bullshit of their lives. Sorry that I'm cussing, but just... You know what I mean? Like people, people may be feeling sad. I'm hearing that you may attract a lot of sad people um, and you help uplift them in a way. You help them keep motivated, remaining positive, finding the fun and the lightheartedness in their own lives. Like trying to find things to do to keep them so that they don't go down this depressive hole of sadness. I don't know why I'm channeling this. You have attracted people in your past that may have some mental health issues that may not resonate for everyone, but I am channeling that. You know how to uplift people's spirits. You know how to make people, you know, feel happy or find the positivity in their lives. You know how to get people to laugh is also what I'm hearing. You know how to help people find special happy things in the little moments. Like, there's something about when people look back on the memories that they shared with you, it's like memories that they're going to be keeping with them for the rest of their lives. Like little special memories that they're going to look back on and smile. Or they may even be happy crying. It's like you bring this sense of healing because it's like a healing through experience. You're just an experience in general, pile too, but there's something about you where you keep things so new. It just It's like newness like never before have I experienced anything that I have except with pile two um so it could just be maybe you like to show people new places I'm really getting it's just your vibe it's your personality but you're just so up for anything that these people that are you know missing you they're like I'm never gonna do something like this again because it was only with pile two that's what I'm channeling it's like you are almost like a once in a blue moon type of person where they know that they're never going to experience another person like you or it's very rare to have someone like you in their life um 
I'm really getting that and I'm really channeling a lot of these people that are saying these positive things and who's missing you the most. I'm getting that it's like people that you've dated or this could be like an ex best friend, but I'm getting like a really close and intimate relationship. This is not like a platonic relationship. This is someone that you had a very close relationship with at one point. I'm really channeling that. Um, this person really misses you a lot. Um, they're very sad right now because they're thinking about all the good times that you guys share together. I'm really channeling that. This person's really sad without you being in their energy and in their company. I want to see if they could say anything to you right now because I, I know this is going to help someone. With this one person that I'm picking up, if they could say anything to pile two right now, what would they say? What would they say to pile two if they could say anything? All right, we got two cards here. You and I were too young. I wonder if you were happy without me. So again, with that youthfulness energy, you may have met this person when you were younger. This could have been like a friendship or a romance, like a childhood connection. Um, I'm hearing that you guys both walked away. That's what I'm really channeling here. This person and you both chose to walk away from this connection um, and this person is also just thinking really fondly of you. I'm seeing this as happy memories. So they're not like bitter. They're not like angry. They're just kind of like thinking about the good times that you guys shared. And they're wondering how you're, how you're doing. They're wondering if you are still the same way that they remember you to be. Because when they think about you, they think of you as being very happy. They think about you as having this very wild, passionate spirit. And they're wondering if you still have the same essence or vibe or that you even miss them, right? Um, there is a sense that they want, they may want to even reach out is what I'm channeling here. I replay our conversations over and over. Yeah, this person is in La La Land thinking about what they missed out on or, you know, if they can rekindle this connection. I'm really seeing that. Um, let's see what their next action is towards you before I continue on with your reading, Pile 2. But what is this person's next action towards Pile 2? And I dropped a card, so hold on. Okay, so we got the Strength card. Um... They're going to be trying to resist their urges. So they could also be a Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. I'm getting that. So strong Aries and Leo energy that I was picking up for this reading. But it seems like they're going to be resisting. They're going to be resisting reaching out or speaking up or talking to you. But again, when you see that strength card, this is not an easy feat. And the next card I pulled was the Ace of Cups. So they want to start a new emotional connection with you. They still have a, a soft spot for you. They have a lot of love for you. They want a relationship with you. And again, this could be a new friendship, a new romantic connection, but they want to start something new with you. But as of right now, they are holding themselves back. Um, they're resisting their urges. Uh, they're trying to fight off. Hearing something about fighting off their ego, yeah, so I don't know if anything's going to happen with this person, but this person does miss you and that message needed to come through. Um, let's go ahead and look at other things on why people could be regretting losing you at this time. I'm going to go ahead and pull some more cards for you. Why do people regret losing Pile 2? We got Aries again. So much fire. Again, fierce, assertiveness, selfish, rebellious, daring, competitive. So people regret losing you because, again, there's something really... I'm hearing macho in my head. That's not why I wanted to say macho. Um, you're just exciting. Like, you bring a little bit of pizzazz. I'm hearing pizzazz and sass into people's lives. Like, you are you bring a little bit of edge to people's lives. You make things seem... I'm hearing more chaotic. I'm not going to lie, Pile 2. You may be a little bit of a handful, I am feeling that, and you bring this sense of excitement because there's drama. You stir things up in people's lives. You bring changes, and the changes that you bring into people's lives are a little bit chaotic, and they can be seen as a little bit messy. Um, so underneath that card too, look at this, a new start. So you had this way about you, I'm telling you, experiences that the universe puts in your path. Look at what the card says. 
first phases, look ahead, pay attention to new people, opportunities. I'm just seeing that you bring a sense of newness into people's lives. A, fr a breath of fresh air is what I'm channeling and you make it very fun. So these new experiences are a little bit chaotic. It's very fast paced. I'm getting like eight of wands energy. Lots of things start happening in people's lives once you come into their lives. Um, you intensify what's going on in their life, which can be a good or a bad thing. Um, you help bring a sense of empowerment to people is also what I'm seeing. You help strengthen people. Again, with that strength card, you are a really good ally. I'm really seeing that for you. I'm seeing that you and another person could be like, I don't know why I'm getting this. You and another person, you have like a power couple dynamic where I don't know if you already have this in your life, but are at one point. But it's like you bring a little bit of crazy into maybe a more stable person. <laughs> so I'm seeing like you and another person almost being like polar opposites um, where you get this person out of their shell. You help this person learn to lean into their power more, learn to speak up more, kind of like be a little bit more bold. Like you're that type of person where you encourage people to be in the best way possible pile to a little bit more unhinged, a little bit more crazy, if you will. Um, and I'm seeing that you are going to be that person where you attract people that are a little bit more reserved. You attract people that are a little bit more quiet, but it's like your energy brings out a fierceness out of them. So these people that regret losing you are people that find it hard to stand up on their own or find it hard to speak up or they just, they miss your presence because it's so dynamic. I'm really getting that for you. Um, and it's not just like the way that they speak or their energy, but it could even, could even be like how they accessorize or express themselves like physically through like their clothing, their hair. I don't know why I'm getting this, but it's like their whole aesthetic will change when they're around you. So I'm also hearing something about how you may try to, you know, empower people by being like oh yeah you should wear that because it's gonna look so hot on you and like the person may be like I don't know I feel a little bit like embarrassed to wear this and you're like no no just do it just do it like you're like a hype man you're like just do it like I got your back like if you fuck up I'll catch you like it's like it's kind of like that friend that you know will push the person into some kind of questionable situations but again you're almost like a guard dog I keep channeling that you're gonna protect your friend no matter what even if they get into some trouble and it's because you want them to open up you want them to loosen up you want them to have a fun time you kind of attract people that may be stressed out or they don't know how to unwind and they don't know how to be carefree and you're that friend that almost allows them to, you know, just relax or chill out or loosen up or do something a little bit crazy in their own eyes. So some people may see you as the bad influence friend, but I think you know how to do it in a way that's, you know, still healthy, that's still manageable, but you get people to be a little bit wild and carefree and fun and everyone needs a friend like that, right? Everyone needs a friend that they can just open up with and have fun with and do some crazy stuff together with, right? Um, you know, don't do anything that could hurt you or hurt other people, obviously, but... Whoever you are, Pile 2, you are missed because you are just a, a ball of fun. I'm seeing that. You are a ball of fun and you really have people thinking back on experiences with you because, again, it's like I could never do anything like I did except with Pile 2. Like, never again. Like, that was like a once-in-a-lifetime memory or outing or whatever. You are unforgettable is what I'm channeling from spirit for you, Pile 2. So... Let's pull some tarot cards for you, pile two, to see. I'm just, I'm hearing, why are you unforgettable? So, not why do people regret losing you, but why are you unforgettable? Why is pile two unforgettable? Three of cups, again, you're just a friend. You're such a great friend. And when you think about the three of cups, this is like party, celebration, communication. But it's the cups, which is like the emotions. It's like... Something about your energy is like a roller coaster. The adrenaline, the fun, um, just your emotions are so full. I'm seeing this 
Yeah, and the Knight of Pentacles. So I'm hearing something about how, I don't know why I'm channeling this too. That Knight of Pentacles is making me think again of you attract people that are very focused on responsibility and duties and rituals and routines and you have this way about you that I'm seeing something about how you help people lighten up or um, you encourage people to kind of break from their routines. But I also want to say this about you too. I'm hearing that you actually are extremely loyal to the people that you love and care about. You're just a really good friend. I'm seeing that you are a strong friend. Um, with that three of cups, this is like a community setting. You're there for people emotionally um, and you keep things light and fun. That nine of pentacles is making me think of someone that will go all out for you. Someone that will be there for you. Someone that's reliable. Someone that's not going to go anywhere. And even with the strength card, someone that's strong. Someone that knows how to help defend if need be. Like you are just, you're like a rock, but it's like at the same time, you know how to have fun. Like, I don't know how to describe this. It's like, you're not boring, but you're also, you know, someone that's going to be reliable, but also someone that just knows how to get things going is what I'm hearing. Like you, I don't know how to describe this vibe. Um, how do I describe this vibe? It's like you bring pleasure into people's lives but you're also someone that you can depend on at the same time. And that's such a duality because when you think of the fun friend or when you think of the crazy friend or the friend that's going to get you into trouble or bring new experiences, you think of like flighty, you think of a free spirit. So they're like a once in a lifetime fun friend, but not a stick around friend. But it's like you have the best of both worlds where you're the stick around friend. You're the loyal friend. You're going to be there through thick and thin. You're going to defend your ally. If someone is getting hurt in front of you, you're going to, you know, pick up the pace. You're going to be that one that I mean, seeing this as, again, a guard dog, you're going to be that friend that helps protect your friend, but you're also the friend that's super fun and engaging and maybe has like a part of your lifestyle. It's like you have both. And that's very unique in its own way. Um, yeah, so let's get one more card for you, Pile 2. Why are you unforgettable? One last card. Look at that, Venus in love. So again, you are a charmer. You are very, very, very romantic. You are a charmer. You're someone that really puts in all the stops when it comes to people that you're dating. Uh, people that you're friends with like you also could be the type of person where you want to make everything special for your mate or your friends like you maybe even spend money like you want to like give people again experiences so experiences mean little special moments so you may be like for example renting out a yacht if you have a lot of money renting out a yacht for like the day for you and your friends to hang out or maybe you want to like buy concert tickets for you and your friends to hang out or maybe if you're dating someone you want to spend a lot of money on a nice romantic you know dinner and a movie or whatever and if this is not it doesn't even have to be like expensive or money or anything like that but I'm just I'm seeing this as you put in effort because you want to make sure that your loved ones feel loved by you. Um, I'm seeing this as laying it on thick, right? You're very charming, charismatic. You adore your loved ones. And so people regret losing you because not everyone is as passionate and loving as you. They're not as, you know, it's just, it's really bold when it comes to your love. Like you can feel the love. You can feel the passion off of you. Um, again, you're very powerful in your energy. And so whatever energy that you direct onto people, it's like times 10. It's extreme. You can feel it. And when you love someone, you really love someone. <laughs> but at the same time, when you're pissed off at someone, when someone has tried to hurt your friend, you really will like show up for them. So again, loyalty times a hundred times a thousand, like dang, like these people that have missed out on you. I, I actually feel really bad for them because they missed out on a good one. I'm hearing that. But pile two, that is all that I have for you. So if you guys liked this video, I have more videos like this on my YouTube channel. If you guys are interested 
and I will see all of you in the next one. Bye. Hi all three. So welcome to your guys' pick a card reading about why do people regret losing you? I got a really interesting message for your pile. Um, I don't know if this is about multiple people or maybe just one person in your energy pile three, but I was channeling that I made a mistake for you. And there's something about how people don't see you clearly or they don't see the circumstance clearly until after you're gone or till after things have happened. There's something about how people make a judgment on you and then they see the facts or they see the consequences for making said judgment on you after the fact and then they realized that they made the wrong choice or they were being blinded from the truth or maybe their intuition was blocked when it came to you or something regarding you. Um, so the reason why people regret you, I'm, I'm really seeing that people regret losing you because I'm seeing something about how there's like common interest or there's like similarity. I'm channeling something about similarities or common interests or something about you and this person. It's like you come off as likable to them. Oh, okay. I'm channeling this for someone in particular. You, pile three, there's gossip surrounding you and your character right now. And people tend to listen to that gossip and they tend to not listen to their own intuition when it comes to you. I don't know how this is going to resonate for everyone that's watching this pile, but when people meet you, they like you. They see you as a kindred spirit or there's something that's relatable that they see within you. But then something happens where they make a choice to walk away or they discredit their intuition or maybe even your own intuition. Like, you may tell them something and they're like, no, that's not true or no, that's not going to happen. And then they realize that you were right or that they realize that they made the wrong choice. So for some of you guys, I'm picking up that, you know, people are listening to bias judgments regarding you. And then they recognize like after, you know, they decide to not have you in their life anymore or maybe they let you go from a job or maybe they choose to move on from you and then they reflect later on and they're like, wow, I really messed that up or I should have listened to pile three or this connection was something that was way more meaningful, but I let other people get in the way of our friendship or our collaboration or our relationship or whatever this is going to be referencing to. There's something about how you listen to your intuition through and through. And I'm hearing for some people, you give really great advice, but people don't want to listen to it or people really don't take your word for merit until it's too late or people discredit you or people don't see the true authenticity that is you until afterwards. So there's something about how people make actions or they choose to do things regarding you or your character or something involving you and then they regret it later on because they were wrong or something in regards to they recognize that you were right at the end of it. Um, I want to clarify more on this because it seems like you may have been telling people that something was going to happen. You guys may be highly intuitive. You guys may be psychics, clairvoyants, um, whatever, or you're just someone that's very perceptive. And so you tell people like, hey, this is going to happen if you don't try and fix this or, hey, I saw this or I heard this um, and there's something about this that doesn't feel right to me. We should fix this and maybe this person doesn't want to listen to you or maybe they don't believe you. Um, I'm getting that this is like very general. There's so many things that could be associated with you in regards to this, but people don't listen to your advice when they need to or they make the wrong choice when it comes to you and then they regret it afterwards. I, it's like you're the justice card. I want to I want to clarify more on this cuz there's something about you where people just make the wrong choice when it comes to you. And this isn't just in one particular field. This is like in many different areas of your life. People I don't know why that is. Um why do people regret pile 3 or regret not being in pile 3's life? Um Page of Cups. 
I keep hearing your innocence. So yeah, underneath that was the seven of swords. Someone has been lying behind your back or someone is taking your innocence for granted. But again, with that justice card, there's some sort of karma that's tied to you, pile three. I'm not going to lie. You may have attracted people in your life that may have used you, lied to you, lied about you, or tried to steal from you. And the reason why these people are regretting, I heard regretting you, right? So I'm really channeling, this is in regards to your enemies or people that have tried to swindle you out of money, try to, you know, use, do something in regards to their own pride or their own ego because of their own selfish gain. Someone tried to win one over on you or multiple people. It's like, I don't know what's going on with you, pal three, but there's something about how the year that you're watching this or the time that you're watching this, I'm seeing, wow, I'm hearing a big F you to your haters. I, I didn't want this reading to be like this. I don't choose how my readings go, but this is what's coming out for you. This reading is all about the people that doubted you, all about the people that lied on you, tried to steal from you and tried to hurt you or, you know, use your innocence to their own advantage or they saw you wear your, your heart on your sleeve and so they hurt you, they betrayed you. They, they saw your innocence as weakness. They saw your sweetness, your pureness as a way for you or sorry, a way for them to, you know, mishandle your your own youthfulness, your own heart, your own intuition. But there's something about you that's being awakened. I'm hearing that. I'm seeing this as you being awakened. You are going to be seeing people receive some sort of karmic justice in the year that you're watching this. I'm channeling this for you. And I heard regret you. And I didn't mean to say that, but I'm going to take it exactly how I said it. These people are going to regret messing with you. They are you know, they're not regretting losing you. They're actually regretting effing with you for messing with you. They're regretting you because they didn't recognize how strong you were when it comes to your spiritual protection, when it comes to your spiritual abilities, your spiritual knowledge, your own intuition. They didn't recognize how powerful you were until it's too late. And I'm seeing the justice card as God coming to them and, you know, showing them the consequences of their own actions. So I want to clarify, what is this justice card? What is this justice that's going to be, you know, for you, but also for these people? Ace of Wands. So I'm seeing this as, I'm hearing, poof, things happening, new beginnings. Oh, wow. We have the Knight of Wands under here. I'm seeing in forms for justice for you. You are going to be getting some form of inspiration. There's going to be new, fun, and exciting opportunities and events. But I'm also, I don't know why I'm seeing this. This person is looking behind their back. I'm seeing this as two messages here. So I'm seeing this, if this were to represent you, you have been, again, you know, fighting off your enemies. And you're kind of looking behind your back because you're looking at this past version of you and be like, wow, like I really let these people get the best of me. But then here comes God giving you another wand or they're going to be like your ally and they're going to be fighting off your enemies. But I'm also seeing this as your enemies trying to fight and get what you have, thinking that the battle's over. And then here's poof, God's about to, you know, give them some sort of karmic justice. I... I'm really feeling that these people, because I keep channeling innocence here, I want to clarify what that page of cups is because whoever these people are, there's something about how they saw you as an opportunity for something, but the way that they went about it was really, really hurtful. Yeah, we have cancer here. So it's something about your feelings, something about how you are sympathetic to people, again, how you comfort people. You're very loving to the people, even just people that you first meet, you're just very open. And people saw that as a way to get control of your emotions. Uh, they wanted to be able to take power or ownership over you is what I'm hearing. Because I'm hearing that there's something that they wanted from you. I want to see what that is. What did they want? 
Why did they, why did they hurt or try to block your intuition or take ownership of you? What were they wanting from pile three? What was the, the long call? What was the end game? What were they wanting to take? Because I'm hearing taking from pile three. Sad in return. Paying your dues. Wake up call. Time to grow up. They wanted to take away... This is weird. They wanted to take away your youthfulness. They wanted to make it so that you had restrictions in your life. But whenever I see Saturn return, this is making me think of waking up to your power. They saw something about you where, wow, there's really something here about the eyes. You can see people for exactly who they are and they were trying to prevent something from growing or blossoming in your life when it comes to your own power, your individuality, and something in regards to your potential. And it has something to do with stability. It has something to do with the way that you would mature. You would become someone. I'm hearing that. You would become someone. And the best way for them to be able to control this or to subdue this was to be, again, the moon is here, was to be able to affect your moods, your feelings, your emotions. Maybe this is in regards to your family, but make you feel uncomfortable, make you feel stuck, make you feel like you're questioning yourself constantly. Um, I know this is not really applying to your reading, Pile 3, but this message wants to come out for you. People are going to regret what they've done to you because you are finally stepping into your power and this power, yeah, this power is going to be <clears throat> accompanying with things working out in your benefit for you. I'm seeing this as God has a plan for you and I'm seeing this as a wheel, like a wheel of fortune. Things are about to start turning in your favor and it's backed up by your spirit team, by God, by the universe. You're going to be highly favored at this time and so people are going to be regretting the things that they've done to you, the things that they've said about you behind your back, the things that they may have stolen or taken from you. Because I'm hearing that this is going to be the year where you're vindicated. And this is like, I'm hearing like a spiritual court. Wow. I don't know what's going on here, but this is all in regards to maybe even possibly some like legalities. This could even be involving, this is really deep, you guys, but someone could be going to jail you could be getting some sort of court document or something working out in your favor when it comes to the government, when it comes to a court case, when it comes to some sort of contract or legality. Um, I'm also seeing something in regards to, this could even just be spiritual court where, you know, your spirit team, God, whatever you believe in, is having these people be in this spiritual court case where they're going to be having to, you know, pay their dues or face, I'm hearing facing their fears or paying up in regards to some sort of karmic debt that they've done against you and it has something to do with your innocence it has something to do with your willingness to help people your heart and also them trying to block your own intuition when it comes to their morals when it comes to their own agenda so whoever is watching this video this is not going to resonate for everyone but i am getting that this is going to be the year of karmic justice for you because Something's been taken from you that wasn't meant to be taken from you. This is something that someone tried to one-up you or block you from something. And your spirit team is like, no more. I've been getting this message quite a bit in some of my other readings. And, you know, it really doesn't surprise me because 2024 is Saturn. It turns into an eight. This is the year of karma. So you're going to be seeing a lot of people just you know, your everyday life, people on the news, celebrities that will be facing some sort of karma. Um, and it could be through, you know, things being exposed, things being revealed, or people, you know, receiving some type of win. So you're going to be seeing this throughout media and people in your lives. And it could be small things, but it could also be really big things. And a lot of this could be involving the law, uh, court, contracts, big wins, you know, past secrets right secrets eighth house secrets being exposed so this is going to be again saturn return right this is going to be a year where everything that you have done towards people will be basically shown everything that has been hidden everything that's been blocked off everything that all the good things that you've been doing too so it's not just the bad but all the good it's going to be reflecting outwardly into your everyday life 
and I'm seeing that there's going to be people that will be regretting that they even messed with you. But let's go ahead and move on from that message, uh, pile three. I want to see the people that aren't out against you or not, they haven't tried to hurt you, but these are just people that miss you, right? So why do people regret losing you or why do people just miss you in general? Let's try to end this on a more positive note where it's not, you know, super petty or anything. Um, you did need to know that message though. I lost myself for a little while. Why do people regret pile three? Or, <laughs> see, I'm not even trying to say that. Why do people regret losing pile three? I think your whole reading is about why do people regret you? I just, I know that sounds really harsh the way that I'm wording that, but for some reason, yeah, on the bottom of the deck, I hope that you can forgive me one day. I think people, I'm just, I keep hearing this, people are facing their dues when it comes to you. So I'm just going to keep it as this because this is going to be your pile, pile three. <sighs> pile three, I'm seeing this as you, you and them, you had this sense of identity that you lost. Again, something was blocked when it came to you. You weren't able to access something. This could be something physical or this could just be something internal within you. Um, people have been almost like roadblocks in your life. And you are coming to a part in your, of your life right now where you are awakening up to something or you're going to be getting some sort of truth or clarity regarding people in your life or just something about you within this year. And whatever this is, it's not going to hurt you, but I'm seeing that whatever this is involving, I'm hearing these people did not want this to be revealed to you. They didn't want this to get out. And I'm hearing that they're scared. This is a really interesting message that whoever these people are, or just person in general, they are scared for you to know the truth of this. They're scared for this to be revealed because they know that you have backup or they know that you're going to be getting some sort of, you know, win from this. So they're almost like, again, they're, they're hoping that you can forgive them, not because of them wanting forgiveness, but because they don't want to face the consequences of this. I, I don't know who this is going to resonate for because I just, I feel like this is so specific for someone. And whatever this is, whoever is going to regret losing you or just regret you, letting you walk away, wow, regretting you walk away being beaten down. I, I'm seeing this as this person wanted to do something for their own ego they wanted to win one over you and they let you walk away without saying sorry or apologizing or trying to make amends with you and they let you it's really making me think you know what it's really making me think of joseph from the bible where he was loved by his family because he had these dreams these visions and it was to the point where his family was like spoiling him because he was like the, the golden child of his family. But his brothers were extremely jealous and envious of him. And so I think they even tried murdering him. They tried, you know, offing him. Um, and he ended up getting into power later on. He, he struggled. He had nothing. Everything was taken from him because of the expense of his own brothers being so jealous and envious of him. The love and the money and the assets that he was getting. Uh, for his visions, for his prophecies. And so he ended up becoming Pharaoh later on and coming back to this family and being in some sort of power or authority later on. And it's like, again, it's like you, the universe, your spirit guides are going to be granting you some sort of access or power after you have been maybe publicly shamed, maybe humiliated in some sort of way, maybe someone, you know, tried to do something selfish and get one over you. But it's like at the very end, God sees all, the universe sees all, and they're trying to balance the scales for you because whatever happened in that situation was very unfair. You lost yourself, but then it's like you're rising from the ashes and kind of having this resurrection moment of finding yourself again through all the BS and you're coming out stronger. And these people or this person are going to be witnessing you and they're going to be feeling this outmost remorse because they recognize that it almost helped you in a way. Them hurting your character or them betraying you or them doing this to you 
made you step into some sort of new role or have access to something or have something in regards to power over them. This is a funny um, example that I'm getting. This is like, okay, I'm getting two funny examples. This is like, if for example, if you dated someone and this person, let's just say they, they said a lot of crap about you behind your back. Maybe they, you know, cheated on you. Maybe they just were not being the best person to you in your face as well as behind your face. And then you guys broke up and this person really humiliated you because of all the things that they did. And then... <laughs> This is a really weird example. I don't know why this is coming into my mind, but let's just say you and this boyfriend broke up and then later on you end up like meeting their brother or something and you end up getting married to their sibling. And so now this, now this person has to like watch you be in their family even though they publicly humiliated you. Or let's just say you and a boss had like this huge blowout and this person, you know, fired you and it was really messy. And then you start working for a new company that owns this boss's company. So again, they're going to have to watch you and interact with you in a public setting, but you're technically their boss. It's, that's the example that I'm getting. So they're going to regret losing you, Pile 3, because you're going to be having a role change. And this role change is going to be forcing them to have to respect you. They're going to have to, you know, I'm hearing lay down their arms when it comes to you, to stop being petty with you, to stop fighting with you. They're going to have to, even if they don't respect you, they're going to have to publicly, you know, just respect you, even just being fake, right? But they're going to have to let their fight with you go or let their pettiness go or put down their ego when it comes to you because it's like you're on a whole other level than they are with whatever this is talking about. I want to see what this is because, again, this could be in regards to anything. We've got the fourth house as well as Saturn. So, yeah, there's something in regards to family, home life changes, comfortability. I'm seeing the Saturn with the fourth house. This is obstacles and challenges when it comes to family, when it comes to kids, when it comes to home, living environments. So this person may have shamed you for the way that you grew up, your family background, your ancestors, maybe the way that you were brought up when it comes to family traditions or even your own living and home environment. Um, yeah, I'm hearing they could have said that you didn't have enough resources or enough money or that you were low class or that they didn't want to be associated with you because of your family or because of the way that you grew up. It's like they saw you as lesser than because of your own family or because of the way that you were brought up growing up. They didn't see the potential in you or they didn't want to be associated with you. But something about that, I'm hearing that this could have been empowered you to become someone better. I don't know if that, what that makes any sense for anyone, but I'm seeing this blockage. Yeah, I, as I pulled the next card, I'm seeing whatever blockage or limitation this person, you know, kind of thrust it on you. You used it as a way to, you know, encourage yourself to find a solution for. It's like you almost made it so that you pushed yourself. Um, there is a purpose here. There is a lesson that you learned with this, but also it's going to be showing how you kind of blossomed out of a very difficult situation, not just with this person, but just through your own life, right? And I'm hearing that you were dealt a hand of cards that was very hard for most people to be able to navigate through. And whoever this person is almost they almost made it worse by the things that they said to you or the way that they tried to make you feel or the way that they made it so that you doubted yourself. And whatever is going to be happening in this situation, you had to find like your own sense of direction without this person or, you know, with all of these setbacks in your life. Or you had to separate yourself from maybe this person in general and keep your options open. And it's like you found your way back to whatever this blessing is. Because I'm seeing this being like almost like a, a knighting. Like someone's going to be knighting you or recognizing you or offering you this opportunity that's going to be elevating you. And this person or people are going to have to watch that. 
and they're going to have to learn to respect it because it's not going to change. You're not going to go anywhere. Um, this cannot be taken from you is what I'm hearing. I want to get one last message for you, pile three, regarding this because I feel like I'm starting to lose the message because I think this is all that you needed to hear. Why do people regret losing you or why does this person regret losing you? Because I'm kind of just channeling one energy in particular. And this could be like an ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, an old family member, an old boss. I'm, I'm seeing this person had a lot of power over you, a lot of control over you, and they're not going to have that power or control anymore. And it's like you're claiming that all back. That's what it feels like. One last message is forgiveness, contemplation. Again, this person regrets losing you because, wow, they're going to see that you have completely changed your life that you're no longer the same person that they can manipulate. Again, underneath the deck was also the South Node. So it's like you are leaving the past in the past. You have learned or completed some sort of lesson, but they're going to be recognizing that they have a lot of debt that they need to work through. They have a lot of things that they need to overcome. And there's something about how they are going to be asking for forgiveness because that came out twice here. So they're going to regret losing you because maybe they are going to be feeling bad about how they didn't apologize to you or they're going to be feeling like they messed up or they goofed up or they should have done something different when you were in their life. Um, they should have kept trying or they should have done this instead. There's a lot of past energy that they're going to be involved in. They're going to be in their own subconscious, their own illusion of what they could have done better or what they should have done instead than what they did. But I feel like it's going to be too late, right? And that's why they're going to regret losing you because it's going to be too late. You may forgive them, but you're not going to forget. And that's what they're going to be recognizing. But pile three, that's all that I have for you. So I really hope that this was helpful. I have more videos like this on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested. And I will see all of you in the next one. Bye.